Hello everybody and welcome to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning. morning. You excited for four games? Yeah. Yes. We're you... playing Dead Space today. Yeah. Time of recording on the stream. On the stream. I'm really excited. It's boot. I've not played it and I've not done it. Any looking, because no I looking, no can't pixies. wait to... I'm really excited to play it, and I'm really excited to hang out with my pals and play it with them as well. Oh, who's coming? That's the nicest she's ever been to us. I think she means us. I mean, oh. you guys. Oh, well, Actually, I don't mean Peter, because he made cookies last night and didn't bring any into the office oh. to share. So yeah. I just mean pal just for me. Ben. Me? Mm. Yeah. That's nice. That's that's good. Not that, that makes Ben's me bought me nice. any cookies, but he didn't, he didn't make, make cookies. Any. A pal so shouldn't need to. A pal shouldn't need to bring cookies. That's all. That's true. We can talk about cookies until the cows come home. Home. And they probably would bring cookies, actually, Peter. Mm. Just made with their own saying. milk. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, but what we need to talk about right now is the very real video game adjacent sponsor mm. that brings you this podcast today. Each and every week we have one. They help us keep the lights on here. Uh, Dead Island 2 The Spider is still seemingly a wall. Mm. Um, I saw a spider in the office yesterday, actually, oh, next him. door. So maybe Not he's. Her. Maybe they're next door. Mm. That could be Dead End to the Spider. Who knows? Anyway, mm. I've got the ad read in front of me now. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a bold new vision for the future. It's really expensive, but it's going to change the way we play games forever. Right? Okay. It's the new virtual reality headset from Sony, but this one is a special edition that's mm. in collaboration with Star Wars, and that is, of course, PSV R2. D2. No, nope. no, just just R two because it's his, his friend. Yeah, yeah, just to his yeah. friend. PSV R two is the new headset. Uh, it's even more expensive, and it's it's just a color scheme, really. It's oh, just so it doesn't blue make and, little like bloops and bleeps. It does do bloops and bleeps. Uh, every time you take it off, it makes that wow. ear splitting wow, wow noise, uh, like like you're in danger, mm. and um, it actually hurts a lot. But you pay extra for that. Are they going to ah. release any sort of companion hardware PSV? 3PO. <laughs> PSVPO. Uh, PSVP3PO. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. We'll, okay. we'll have to wait and see. Currently, it's just PSVR2. Right. Um, uh, they did talk about doing... I'm trying to think of another one now. Um, PS PSVRR Binks. Uh, but that one... <laughs> <laughs> but that no. one didn't that one didn't perform too well in the focus testing stage. People no. didn't people didn't want that. Um and it you, smells stinker with, et cetera. <laughs> and you always e put it on backwards, get into hijinks, it's terrible. This so. morning I read an article about Mesa, like the like the test you have to do. And I read it as Misa. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it Mensa. Me oh, maybe not Mensa then, but it was Mesa was oh, the word Mesa. But I read yeah. it as Misa. Misa. Black Misa from uh Half-Life. Yeah, mm. of course. Mesa Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> PSVR, PSVR two. Space 2 is real, but PSVR 2 is not real, uh. unfortunately. Uh, it's not a real sponsor. Um, instead, we are sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com, where for as little as $1 per month, you could submit questions to this show. We've got lots of other tiers available as well. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Please go and check it out if you haven't already. Uh, we really appreciate you, and we appreciate our existing patrons as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're going to go shoot an episode of um, Main Menu tomorrow. We are. Mm. At the time of recording. Two it's really episodes, exciting. Actually. It's been a, been a while. We, I think we recorded the Christmas episode in... October? October, yeah. yeah. So it's been a long old time since mm. we've been in the kitchen. I don't have Strongbow cans like, anymore. Is that like six months? It's like half a Probably, year. Probably, yeah. 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 Just about. Almost. We've got to work out what we're going to prop the table up on, though. Yeah. Because uh, it's quite a short little table. Like when we is. were, oh, we'll bring that table, it'll be fine. And then we got there and I was like, oh, it's barely at hip height. What's yeah. happening? So it's we not need really to get... suitable. I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying Taller to think table. Can... four things that are all the same height, or Many maybe tins? two long things that are all. I don't have four. I might have four tins. I'm not sure. There might be four tins of chickpeas. They might have, but they would have to be all the same tins. You couldn't have yes. like a green giant and a <laughs> and an you know, a, a sweet corn, one of those corn, fat sweet corn, a, like a fat tuna. short ones. Yeah. I've got loads of PS3 game boxes, and they could work, but I'm worried about the stability because the top layer could shift quite easily mm. and then they would all fall. Mm. So we'd need to be, again, we're going to need to be very careful, uh, but I don't think we're making anything that Maybe we could suspend could... it from the ceiling. Maybe that is the right answer, yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. Or maybe we just work on the floor. Yeah. Who knows? But Who this knows? is the first time we're shooting main menu where we have our 
portable recording devices, mm. which is going to make it so much easier because there aren't wires to trip over. Yeah. No. So it's an exciting day. We're also shooting this episode, this podcast episode, I should say, in two parts because we're recording the first part on Thursday. There's a state of play, a PlayStation state of play tonight, Thursday night. It's always on a Thursday, isn't it? It's always on a bloody Thursday. Peter isn't normally in on a Friday, but he is in tomorrow. I am this week, yeah. So we are going to record the rest of the podcast tomorrow. So we might wear different clothes at the end. Don't be probably will. Don't be surprised. (laughs) We might all have food poisoning as well. Mm, Yeah. There we are. Mm -hmm. It's time for question one. Um, this comes from Alex Mace, as in Mace Windu, the new PSVR. Yes, mm. or something. PSVR, or PSVR Windu. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Captain underscore Cone on something. That's just the alias we've been given. Hi, Bap. Inspired by the new Tetris movie trailer, what games have given you the Tetris effect? Mm. For me, it's always been the Assassin's Creed games. After beating one, I can't look past any tall buildings without having planned my route to get to the top. Thanks. Alex, P.S. I told everyone here at Dan Buster Studios that Dead Island 2 The Spider... About. About Dead Island 2 The Spider. And we hope you're looking after our son well. We haven't seen him in months. Thank you, Alex. Uh, thank, thank you, you Alex. Um, we haven't seen him in months. <laughs> have you guys seen the Tetris trailer? No. No. Haven't you? No. I heard it's good. So I kind I of forgot it was a movie. But if I forgot someone, to watch it. I remember them saying they're making a Tetris movie and I thought... How is that going to work? Because I thought it was going to be about the quote unquote plot of Tetris, <laughs> or you know, you play as one of the the blocks, uh, yeah, like it's the about emoji one of the blocks movie. or something, yeah, something silly like that. And I was like, that it makes no sense. But it's about the story mm. of how Tetris was S- smuggled out of Russia, essentially right? smuggled out of Russia, or oh, yeah, it's like a dramatization the of, yeah. uh, and oh, it excellent. looks really. It's like a thriller. It's got like you know the the Soviets are like after this guy who's trying to bring it to America and stuff. It's based on presumably at least a partially true story. The true mm. story is really interesting. Yeah. So okay, well consider me on board. So you then. should now actually watch the trailer okay, because I. Will. I saw it trending and thought this will be silly clicked it and i was like oh okay now it's I almost just silly. tetris adjacent it's just like hey here's a new action movie oh by the way it's actually about tetris but <laughs> yeah yeah it looks really good mm. um so i brought one answer that uh I, I just brought the one answer but it is very much the true sense of the tetris effect mm. don't know if you're aware of this i think in i mean alex is using it in a slightly broader sense which people tend to use now where yeah you, you look at a building and you're like oh i could assassin's creed my way up there right but the Tetris effect is a recognized condition mm. that people can s- essentially suffer from, if that's the right verb, where if you play too much Tetris or do similar um, uh, activities, you can literally, if you lie in bed with your eyes shut, like see shapes falling mm-hmm. and just constantly think about the ways they can all fit together and stuff. So I had that in lockdown where for the first time in my life, Um, because I was a bit bored and for for some time I didn't have a console, I started playing Candy Crush. And all the time, all day, I could just hear the music in my head Mm. uh, because there have been times where I'd spent ages on like the same level playing it over and over again and it plays the same although there's different um bits of music from level to level if you're on the same one over and over you'll play the same music Mm -hmm. and i would just hear the music all the time and sometimes when i closed my eyes when i got into bed i would see like the purple hexagon shaped suites and just think man how am i going to beat that that really tricky one um and i'm sure there was an element of just kind of lockdown cabin fever contributing to that and maybe that wouldn't normally have happened in a more normal world but yeah i definitely got like the actual tetris effect with Mm. candy crush um in sort of 2020 yeah are you still playing it no i gave up like not even before lockdown was over but there was a period of time where i would play it like twice a day every day Uh, but no it's not normally it's not for me like mobile games i just don't play but Mm. The circumstances sort of led me to sit there in bed playing Candy Crush every day. (laughs) Um, Ashton. Well, I have quite a vivid imagination anyway, and my brain's always thinking about something else. And when I played through um, The Last of Us, I went through a phase of like always planning my way out if a zombie went into a room. Like if I was in a space, like a public space, and suddenly there was like, a meandering zombie that walked into the the room i'd be like right 
Who am I going to throw in front of the zombie to get out of here? Mm-hmm. Where am I going? What's the plan? How am I getting out? Could you do that right now in this room? Well, well if the zombie your... came in here, yeah. more realistically, it's going to run a straight line towards you. Yeah. So if I just vault the table and then go around the back, because can you can't you... get us all at once. Are can you it? confident that you can vault the table? Yeah, I could do it. Yeah, you reckon? The table might break. With your legs. <laughs> yeah. We know you how should easily see how quickly I turns. get up the stairs of the metro. I'm <laughs> up those stairs, taking two at a time. I could just probably step up and go. Nice. Well, what you haven't factored into this situation is that I would uh, punch the zombie so hard <laughs> that it explodes. <laughs> and then so you'd, you get, to you'd get bits of zombie on you and then maybe a bit of the zombie is, a, is teeth and it goes in your hand a little uh. bit and then you get the zombie virus, you know? Okay, well... What are you going to do then? Well, if you've punched the zombie and it's exploded... Mm then I guess I don't need to escape anymore because the zombies, the threat's gone. But the, I'm but thinking, the teeth shrapnel. Yeah. But the teeth, you surely the, uh, just a tooth mm. coming near me isn't going to give me the zombie well, It's got zombie slide. If it's got it, zombie bits on it and goes in you, in your hand or whatever, then you might get zombled. You know? Possibly. Well, it depends what the rule of the zombie is. Yeah, it does. Well, this is, I'm, I'm laying it out right now. All I'm thinking is, if there's going to be a zombie pandemic, will I start playing Candy Crush again? <laughs> <laughs> when we were on lockdown number Arguably, number five. you were you a zombie when it. you were playing Candy Crush. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's it. Um, so yeah, this morning, actually, weirdly enough, I was on the Metro and I was like sat in a seat that was kind of like right at the front of the, the carriage mm. of two seater where no one else could sit next to me. And I was like, hmm, if a zombie got on, I'm a, I'm a bit screwed here because I'm in the corner. Yeah. So I'd have to hope it went like right into the more populated mm, bit of the train the and I could like zip out. Yeah. But I was like, mm, treacherous. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever, ever had a zombie plan in a room or a building, but I do sometimes think, particularly on public transport, I if it's kind of quiet, I sometimes find myself looking around thinking, if we uh, were like going through a tunnel and the train broke down, and you know there was a survival situation this is like the the motley assortment of people that in the movie the disaster movie yeah. this is like the team that i'm with there's the big tough jock man there's like the nerd yeah. who is probably kind of going to come up with kind of like a cool solution to something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's the motherly nice lady who's going to look us look after us all mm-hmm. yeah i definitely like look at all the characters who i'm in a room with yeah. or a lift you like typecast everyone yeah yeah um also I do this thing where, especially when I was playing Horizon, if I saw a building, my brain would be like, what would that look like if there was an apocalypse? Like, which bits would it would fall down? Mm-hmm. Which which kind of big, you know, building? I always think that all the student flats around where we are, they'll all come crumbling down because they're basically made out of paper. Yeah, yeah. So, but then you see like kind of old churchy looking things. I'm yeah. like, oh, that would stay. Mm-hmm. That was then it would look nice, well spooky. Nice bits of ivy growing up. Yeah, exactly. And the and roof trees. would cave in and there'd be like flowers all along like the pulpit or whatever that bit's called. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and also I always have dreams about video games. I've been playing Minecraft a lot this week and I keep having dreams about Minecraft. <laughs> What's going on in Minecraft dreams? <laughs> well, just kind of like I'm just in the world, but it's like Minecraft. So it's like my life, but everything's cubes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I also had a weird dream that I was in some kind of like Assassin's Creed-esque Victorian era. And there was a man that was like h- covering up that he was accidentally giving all of this community tuberculosis. And he was hiding Whoa. all their bodies in a theatre. And I found them and I was like... <gasps> And then we had to zip out. I was jumping around and yeah. I was right. all play that with really like basic, boring stock animations. Where he's just going. <laughs> yeah. As he talks to you. you yeah, know, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. P- ben, do you have the Tetris effect? I do have one. Quickly, though. Peter and I look like we're security. For him, <laughs> we do. Yeah. <laughs> Come You're on. the young, hip, up-and-coming TikTok pop star, yeah. mm-hmm. and we're going to make sure... Yeah, especially with your arms crossed that like you're, that. That you're mostly safe. Yeah. I did think when I looked safety. in the camera when you were talking about we wear different things, I was like... We're wearing the same outfit today. Yeah. Mm. Are you wearing blue jeans, Peter? No, he's got no. chinos on. Chinos. Oh, damn it, I'm what what shoes you got on? Today. Yeah, not even similar shoes either. For God's yeah. sake. Mini Converse. If you're going to plan these outfits, you should do a better job. I think yeah. we've got the same font style, though. No, we haven't. No, no. you both... <laughs> I'm wearing a custom shirt today. Mm. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, I have also had a Tetris Effect style moment. I think one one minor one that isn't really necessarily Tetris Effect, but when you've been playing um, Guitar Hero for a while, mm. the walls move yeah. up, <laughs> which, is, which is really weird. Um, but the main one, and I've definitely told this anecdote before, is when I went, I had a friend, a childhood friend, who 
uh, whose parents fitted narrow boats. So his dad was a carpenter mm. and they had a business where they would, they would, you know, they get shells of narrow boats, canal boats, and then fit them and sell them. And they had one. And I went on like a, a two day trip on a canal once. And I had my Game Boy and I borrowed a copy of Super Mario Land. Now, I don't know if you've been on a narrow boat. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot to do on a narrow boat no. and not a lot of space either. So I played Super Mario Land on the Game Boy for about 48 hours straight. <laughs> and when I closed my eyes, I could hear the music and the sound effects. And mm -hmm. in fact, I didn't even need to close my eyes. I, I just heard it all the time. When I closed my eyes, it felt like the walls were closing in on me because it, it was just sort of like this... The, the, a cacophony of noise from this game that I'd been fixating on for so long. Yeah. I had to ask my mum to take away the cartridge uh, because it was scaring me. <laughs> the amount of stimulus was was too much and uh, I had to get the cartridge taken oh, away no. because uh, I'd played too much Super Mario Land. So there's one. Oh, and I've not played it since, I don't think. so. Well, now to talk about something that we've, we've never done this segment before, but I thought, considering it's me, up and coming pop star on TikTok, Ashton Matthews, mm -hmm. um, and my bodyguards, we could pl do a segment called What We Play In. What We Play. It's what we play in time. Time to talk about the games, what we have been playing. Peter Austin, what we have been playing. Uh, I have almost, I think, finished Dead Space. Mm. Um, I won't talk too much about the story given that we're literally about to start playing it today but just again generally in terms of how much i'm enjoying it from a technical standpoint it's really good and it's better than Callisto protocol it's a lot more fun to play how uh, how, how could that be I true i love that game um and uh i i mean it's uh like kind of almost a bit flawless I would say. <gasps> wow. I'm not saying it's like, oh. uh, that's kind of different to it being a 100% game though, because it, you know, it's got a bit of, I guess you could argue it's a bit repetitive at times and mm. combat wise. And, mm. you know, th there are probably places where it could be even better, but it doesn't have anything that I look at or experience and think this is actually a bad thing. So I've not had any glitches. I don't think that I remember. Um, I think the gunplay is great. I think the atmosphere is pretty good. Uh, I mean, again, the thing I've, I complained about when we did a, a review corner on it was that sometimes occasionally a necromorph will somehow creep up on you and not in what feels like an intentional oh we got you kind of way it's mm -hmm. just like no I was I was in a combat sequence and I killed all the ones in front of me and there was one behind me that I didn't know about the music stopped playing and then suddenly I got attacked from behind swiped and why are these really, really noisy mutants sometimes creeping up on me? Mm. Um, which seems a bit odd. But other than that, it's just, it's super fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to you guys playing it. Mm. Uh, the other thing I've been playing, we will get to in Review Corner, uh, but it's the game I've been talking about for a little while, saying, oh, I've got something to talk about. Uh, it's now out. It's Clive Unwrench. Mm. Clive mm. Unwrench, mm -hmm. um, which is a new 3D platformer style game. Um, by an indie developer. And as I say, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but uh, I've been playing that on and off for the past couple of weeks. And I'm very much enjoying it. Feels mm -hmm. good to play. And yeah, I won't say anymore because I'm about to do all that in a bit, but that's what I've been playing. Amazing. Ashton? I've been playing a few things. Um, I finally went back and finished the final boss fight in Jedi Fallen Order. I literally just had that one like five minute bit to go. I just <laughs> hadn't gone back to it and kept forgetting. But it's done now, finished it. Um, so I'm excited for the next one to come out. I also played some more Mafia Definitive Edition at the weekend. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's kind of like a bit kind of mind numbing because you're just going drive to this location, shoot some boys, drive to this location. But it's all heating up now. So maybe some more stuff to do, which I'm quite excited about. Um, played some more Dizzy Dreamlight Valley because they've introduced two more characters. So Who you got? I got Olaf and Mirabelle from Encanto. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, that game's great. And every time they add someone new, I play it for a week, I finish off their quest, and then I put it down again. So I'm enjoying it. I think it's great. And then I also am currently fixated on playing Minecraft, mm -hmm. um, specifically the Vault Hunters mod pack, which Hat Films have been playing yeah, through on playing their that. channel. And I've been watching the series, and I said to my Ben, I said, we have to play this. I, I, what is it? 
it's a mod pack where like you basically have the, make these vault stones and you go into these like procedure generated like vaults. So a portal will yeah, you, appear and yeah. you go through it. And right. then you can like get Lou and if you die in the vault, you die in real life. No, just kidding. You just get kicked out so you don't get any of the XP. And then you can like upgrade like a skill tree inside the mod pack in Minecraft. And mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty fun to be fair. And I really enjoyed it. Um, and I keep, whenever I get home from work, like, hey, can we go play Minecraft? So much of that. Ben's had to be like, I'm not turning the server on. You need to play something else. You need to <laughs> finish your mafia. Yeah, first. come and have dinner. Stop playing Minecraft. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. I think it's great. And I'm going to keep playing that for a while, I think. Nice. So that's what I've played this week. Oh, I, also, yeah. um, a new mobile game that I'm fascinated by oh, as well. Okay. I tweeted about it this week, and I've actually not played any Project Makeover I saw this, this tweet. week. No Project Makeover. It's called Bloody Snack hell. Bar, and you basically run little restaurants, and they're run by cats, mm -hmm. and you have to, like, it's basically just a tapper. Like, you get enough money, and then you tap the next thing to upgrade it and stuff. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting on the metro, just tapping <laughs> away. To my, it's just great, and it's cute. It's got little cats in it. My cat's wearing a little hat, and it's got a wand. And a wand. Nice. It's got a wand. Mm. Nice. You've also played a game that you're going to do on Review Corner, haven't you? I, have, I don't think you've played yeah. it outside of your stream. But... I haven't yet. Okay. I've been That's playing fine. too much Minecraft. Which reminds me, one. I knew there was something else I played. I essentially replayed everything I did on the stream uh, in Hi-Fi Rush outside of the stream because I was like, I bet I've like missed some little some shinies and stuff. So I was like, I want to play this game properly now. I'm probably not going to be streaming episodically. So I was like, I'm just going to restart it at home and now just play it in my own time but yeah that game's great i'm really mm -hmm. enjoying it and it's like surprisingly easy to get to grips with the mechanic i was like i bet i'm going to be rubbish at this yeah. yeah but um you just just make sure you tap into the beat and it's it's kind of simple we had the news today uh, at the time of recording that shinji mikami head of tango gameworks is going to be leaving the studio yeah. soon uh After of course that. shinji mikami best known for creating resident evil mm -hmm. essentially and then when he went and founded this everyone had very high hopes for the horror output of the studio they made the evil within one and two which were not the best not the worst not the best mm -hmm. and then they sort of came out of nowhere with hi-fi rush which it seems pretty evident he wasn't that involved in so either they have been <clears throat> excuse me have been working on another horror title which will be announced soon mm -hmm. or he's just kind of done yeah. and you could probably expect tango gameworks just to make colorful things yeah. from now on maybe like, he's cross that like they brought be. out a non-horror game thunder, it's done yeah. really well and he's like oh all right then they yeah. don't want tango evil gameworks within. the evil the evil within what who <laughs> who what's that it's the hi-fi rush studio uh yeah. yeah i mean it's it's gotta hurt his price yeah i mean he but. said on that article that we were reading that like he wanted to make one more game before he retired in 2020 is when he said that. So oh. he might just be like, I'm leaving. I'm, 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 I'm actually just going to go have a nap. I'm going to go and lie down. Yeah. I'm tired. I've been making games for 25 years yeah. or thereabouts. Understandable. But hey, I guess we'll find out where, where he goes to or if he just goes, yeah. he just goes home. We'll see yeah. if we get Hi-Fi Rush 2 as as a priority now mm. if he's if he's no longer there mm. Mm. anyway so that's all that has been played yes, yes. uh i have had a, a busy week since we last recorded and i haven't really had much of a chance to play things but i have played a few things um outside of my stream where i've been playing dark souls 3 i've been running around and getting items because I'm massively overleveled and I just kind of want to go for a little explore off stream because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying not to stray too far from the beaten path on stream so we can get the game done. And man, Dark Souls 3 is so good. I love that game so much. And it's so nice <laughs> to play it after playing Dark Souls 2, which I regularly criticize. And some people don't like that because a lot of people do really like Dark Souls 2 but I don't. And Dark Souls 3 is just, oh, it's it's got all the benefit of the knowledge they have from making Bloodborne, and it's just way faster. It feels like a more, um, what's the term? Uh, focused, not necessarily focused, linear, perhaps, version of Elden Ring. I'd say that the 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 combat in Elden Ring is is far more like Dark Souls 3 than any of their other games. And so if you really liked Elden Ring and you haven't played any of the Dark Souls, you should play 3. It's really good. Mm. Uh, beyond that, I've played a little bit more Golf Story on the Switch. Mm -hmm. um, I've just won the Wellworm Open. Thank Congrats. you. Thank Congrats. you. Thank you very much. Well a golf clap. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm hoping to go pro soon. Uh, it's getting hard, though. The game's getting really hard. <laughs> and uh, I'm all right at it, but it can be pretty brutal in terms of, well... 
you didn't do it in this many shots, so start again. Mm. Uh, but I'm I'm enjoying the sort of the little story that's going on there. It's still very entertaining and quite funny, and uh, that's great. I'd recommend that. Outer Wilds, I booted it up. Uh, I was being tattooed all of Sunday, and I booted it up on Monday. Um, got to the, I think I I pressed continue. Realized again quite how open that game is in terms of go on go do your own thing and then i closed it again because i just could not i was just couldn't be bothered uh, i will i will play that game at some point and then i started gotham knights which i played for about half an hour and that game has a really good opening because obviously mm -hmm. the premise is that batman has he's unalived and the opening is the the events leading up to batman being unalived and it's a fantastic cutscene. it's really really good and I played the opening tiny weeny bit. But the only thing that stuck out to me so far is that when you have to agree to all the privacy stuff when you boot up new games these days, there was an option that said, do you want us to not sell your data? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, please don't. <laughs> Why? I mean, it's nice to have the option. Yeah. yeah. But it's Thanks also kind of a terrifying glimpse into the world that we live in. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Warner Brothers, for giving me the choice. I want to play Gotham Knights, but my boyfriend doesn't want to play it with me. It's oh. like, oh, I'm not really interested in that game, so I can't justify buying it because I'm like, well, I'm gonna play it through on my own. Uh, I, I, I don't Why know any. It together? I don't, yeah, I don't know anybody. Well, Ashton doesn't have it. Get the game. I don't play know anybody them. else who has it or is interested in playing it. I could play with randoms, but quite frankly, I'm I'm in the mindset at the moment now where I kind of want something brainless to play, mm. where I don't really have to think or listen to story. You want another story. Saints Row. I want another Saints Row. I want to get to the point. And so in, do you? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the point in Gotham Knights where the initial story stuff is out of the way, and all of the things I've heard about in reviews come to fruition, which is you just get dumped in the open world and have to do mindless side stuff for like hours and Blitz. that's that's kind Blitz. of i want a brain dead game and that's kind of the point mm. that i want to get to but i haven't got there yet they're still all talking to each other about batman who are you playing as who are you gonna play as batgirl mm -hmm. I'm, I'm playing as it was it was a toss-up between batgirl and nightwing because i do like nightwing but then i thought i'm gonna play as batgirl and give that a try mm. um she's got the bat cycle it doesn't control the batsicle the batsicle <laughs> doesn't control brilliantly in the bit that i've played so far but hey you know it's early days hey. so i'll report back on that next week hoping to play a bit more this weekend so there we are well i think it's time that me and peter head over to review corner it's there oh there it is over there <laughs> Welcome to Review Corner. It's nice and cozy around oh, here. We've lovely. got some blankets and uh, some cushions and Fire's it's all lit. cozy. Yeah. Peter, mm. you want to talk about this game? This is that game I've been saying, oh, I've got a game, been yeah. playing it, uh, but I can't tell you what it is. I've been wondering, exclusive. I've been racking my brain. It's not an exclusive at all, but thank you very much to Numskull Games. Numskull as in, they're a sister company to, you know, the ones who do all the merch and stuff. They oh, do yeah. like kind of licensed um, stuff. It's not the same company. It's a distinct entity but they they're like a sister thing and oh, they cool. publish games um so numskull sent me a code for clive and wrench <laughs> clive and wrench but you know you drop but the letters because cool. you're cool yeah, yeah. Uh, which is available for ps4 ps5 switch and steam it's out now it came out on i think friday um mm. so you might look at so, well well i'll start immediately by saying this is a 3D platform kind of mascotty style collectathon, right up your alley, right up my alley. It's got your furry, fr furry friends, um, and in the kind of banjo kazooie or ratchet and clank style, you've got one character on your back who you use in a number of ways. One of them is by swinging him around above your head like a helicopter, so that you Brilliant. can ride. But I wanted to quickly say, while this footage is running, if you're watching on YouTube. Um, you might wonder why the, the world looks so empty. And that's because um, I played through the first couple of levels at home in my own time and didn't capture footage of me going through and 100%ing them and collecting mm. everything. And then I got to the third level and I do have footage of that with me collecting things and you'll see the items in the world there. But I don't think it's unfair to say that this is probably not the best looking of all the worlds. Right. And I felt it wasn't very, it wouldn't be very nice to only show that level, even though that is me actually playing the game and collecting stuff. So you will see me collecting stuff later on in this review corner chat, but arguably in a slightly less pretty world. Right. So at the moment, you're looking at some of the 
uh, kind of nicer looking ones. But it's empty because Peter's just such a pro gamer. Because I'm a pro gamer and I've already done it. I forgot to capture the footage. So sorry <laughs> about that. But you'll see some collecting in a bit. Um, but I'll, I'll get straight in there and just quickly say that the, the main drawback of this game, and it's not very nice to start with the negatives, but I'll get them out of the way and then mm. I'll be positive, mm -hmm. is that visually it is very kind of indie unity um, sort of you you can see that this was i think this has been developed by a single person um as far as i'm aware and hey he's done a great job of it no question but it just has that kind of look about it you can see that it's been developed by uh, an indie developer and in places the lighting can look a bit flat and some of the textures are not super pretty um but in other places it can look really nice um all right, it's not mind-blowing PS5 current-gen graphics. It's done very much in a style, not just in terms of gameplay, but in a, in a visual style of, you know, generations gone by. It's more sort of PS2-era-looking mm. game. Um, but that's fine if this sort of thing is up your alley like it is up mine. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do think that is who this game is for, really. So the story is that Clive the Rabbit and Wrench <laughs> the Chimp Mm -hmm. are traveling through time in a 1950s fridge, right? Which okay. is designed by Clive's sister, Nancy. Okay. And the reason they're traveling through time is because they want to stop the mad scientist, <gasps> Dr. Dorcas. Not Dr. Dorcas. Dr. Dorcas has stolen the blueprints for the time-traveling device and has traveled through time and is, you know, trying to take over the world. Right, so each level is like a different time period. Each level is a different time period. Um, so there's a big hub world in the middle, which has these sort of... It's a big circular room and... It's like a big pie chart. And as you walk through each segment, uh, the aesthetic changes and like a different hat will appear on your head. So you mm. can run around the room and like a hat will like pop <laughs> oh, quickly, like from one from one area to the next. Um, and uh, some of them aren't actually time themed. Like the first level is actually just like Toy Story. You're right. just a tiny character in a big house. And there's, uh, yeah, there are some that aren't really timey. They're more just kind of location or they're just themed. But mm. It's that kind of game where it doesn't really matter that that is the case. Um, each world uh, off of the hub world has one actual collectathon level and one boss. Right. Or at least that's my experience so far. Maybe as I go further along, there'll be more than one level per world. But um, the first few worlds that I've played have got one level each and one boss. But there are flipping loads of them. Um, <laughs> loads of bosses. Uh, and all of the levels and bosses have kind of punny names right um i mean like off the top of my head there's there's a snowy prehistoric world called iceratops very good yeah um i i honestly can't think of any of the others right now <laughs> off the top of my head i should have written them down but uh the whole game really is full of puns and references and things like that like there's a victorian there's like a sort of it's like a jack the ripper 1880s mm. world um, and in the center of the street that you're walking around in, there's this nice little square with some like grass and trees. And that's called Nick Park, who is the guy <laughs> in charge of Aardman, who did Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, there's also everywhere you look, like there's shop names and signage and um, mm. it all has sort of like silly jokes in so it. There's lots stuff. of like detail and stuff in there. Yeah, there is. Um, again, some of it visually is is not always presented in like the most kind of appealing way but if you can look beyond that there is actually a lot of humor to enjoy in, mm. in sort of the details um there's a part in the toy store i say toy story you know the the it's called honey i shrunk the chimp i think right, uh, the, the, the level um there's a, a part in that world where you go up on a shelf and there's loads of like they're not actually ps1 games they don't use the ps1 logo but you can tell that they're ps1 games and they're mm. all lined up and it's all of these famous 3d platformer mascotty kind of games but they've all got like a instead of like a bug's life it's like an insect's journey and stuff right, like that yeah. so they're all like that which is nice um like the wish wish titles of like yeah the wish versions yeah. exactly yeah uh, so that's all very entertaining. The main reason, though, that I saw this game and reached out and asked for a code, because there are lots of, you know, pretty decent looking indie games out there, but we don't always cover indie stuff necessarily. No. But the main reason I wanted to cover this is not just because it's a mascot platformer kind of homage, because there are plenty of those out there as well. But this one in particular, I thought looked like it 
moved well. It has、mm-hmm. like a really nice fluidity to it, and you can combine、um, du- double jumps. Sorry, <gasps> I'm not allowed to say that. Legally distinct. Special jumps and like high jumps and gliding and、um, like a sort of a sprinting thing where if you like. Uh, you kind of run on all fours like Tomby does, and you,、mm. if you build up a speed, you can jump further. Obviously, and the way it all like ties together, that is where this game really comes into its own. So it's a shame in a way that it is let down in places by those visual issues. And again, it being an indie game, there are actually every so often there's like a, an animation glitch or something like that, or you might get hit when you shouldn't have done, or vice versa.、Um, but I can honestly just. None of that bothers me when I'm just running full pelt around this world and I'm just somersaulting across massive gaps and I'm gliding and I'm grabbing ledges. It plays really, really well,、mm. and that is why I thought it's worth covering.、Um, so you're collecting all sorts of stuff. There are loads of stopwatches around the world. They're like Spyro gems in terms of frequency. Like they're、right. literally everywhere.、Yeah. Um, there are keys that you can collect. There are ancient stones, which I think there are always ten to a level, and they're a bit more like, again, to make a spiral comparison, they're more like orbs in、mm. that you kind of have to do a challenge or at least reach a difficult to reach place to get those.、Um, and again, if you look at the list of available ancient stones in a level, it gives you a hint as to how you might find them by sort of the name of the challenge. So、right. it would be kind of suggestive. And they all tend to have like sort of puns in the name as well. So there's a lot of that, you know. Wherever you look, there's always like silliness going on with the wordplay.、Um, there's a character in every level called the Karma Llama, which is just a llama.、Mm-hmm. And if you find a hidden scroll in a level and take the scroll to the llama, the llama will give you a hint about the the level that you're in,、oh. so how to access a certain area or something. And then there's all、uh, also a normally a character in a world. Who has sort of lost their children, which is a bit strange. <laughs> so in the Toy Story one, for example, there's a bee in the kitchen, and they're like, "Oh, I was teaching my children to fly, and now they've all got lost." And you、Good. have to go around, and there's like、find、five the little baby bees to find. Yeah, so there's, there's that to do with babies, indeed.、Um, so there's all of that. It's、um, there's loads to collect. The worlds are kind of interesting,、um, and I I really like the. Kind of the care that's gone into it in terms of like the charm that it's got, and as I say, all this kind of wordplay and these references and stuff, and that's all great. And it does have a kind of, I mean, the Nick Park thing is is a interesting comparison actually because it has a kind of Wallace and Gromit vibe to it at times,、mm. and it's very British as well. The developer is British, so、um, yeah. What what it's carried by is the motion and the movement, and like、yeah. if you're into this kind of thing, I do honestly think you should give this a try, purely because it plays so well. Um, even though it doesn't always look super super pretty, and、uh, yeah, there are there are still a few glitches in there. This is just this is for three D platformer fans, though I should say. Like, if you're not into that, this game, I don't think, frankly, it's not going to be for you. But if you are,、um, as the developer clearly is, then you should. I think you should actually give this a try.、Hmm. And I'll be streaming it as well, so you can have a look there and see what you think. But、um, that's that's it. That's how I feel about it. Cool. Um, should we should we just go straight on to what you're playing? Sure,、on? I'll tell you about what I've been playing. Great.、Um, I've been playing a game called Dune Shining, and essentially, it's described by the developers and very accurately, I must say, as a、uh, golf-like platformer. Right. So essentially, you're playing crazy golf in a video game, but it's like a side scroller, essentially. So、okay. the main plot of the game is that. You have found a dodo egg. In fact, lots of dodo eggs,、oh. and you're trying to get the dodo egg into the nest to hatch dodos and bring them back from extinction. Right. And essentially, you are like a wizard, a warlock, and you're in a, you're in training, so you can't really do everything yet.、Mm-hmm. Which is why they're like, well, I can't just pick it up and take it straight to the nest. I I'll have to like, toss it in little bits. Um, and there's this creature. I can't remember what it's called, but it's this big, like tentacly thing,、mm-hmm. whose main thing is that it's like the the kind of being of extinction. And、right. it's like if you bring the dodos back, 
you're going to throw everything off balance. But it just kind of keeps coming back and like being sassy to you and like telling you off. And it's quite, the, the like dialogue's quite funny. It's all done in like text boxes. But the way they talk to each other has just kept making me laugh because okay. it's this, this big creature. It's like, you should, hey, don't do that because it'll flow everything off. And then they're like, I'm going to, I'm going to hatch the right. third Okay. So... No, thanks. Yeah. Um, but essentially how you play it is your typical kind of golf mechanics and you aim where you want to go mm-hmm. and then you press the button to press send power. it off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We well, don't do the power. You just oh, kind just of like you it. move the, you can see the whole like trajectory and you oh, can yeah, like yeah. extend it further without mm-hmm. having to like hold anything down. Okay. Um, but also while you're in these areas, you can like interact with things. So you can like stop your ball dead if you like right. hold down on the deep on the um st- thumbstick or if you can like roll it if you keep pressing up on the mm-hmm. on the stick and then you can also press the now i did play it with a controller but i'm going to capture footage with the mouse and keyboard so it will look different but right. you can basically press buttons to interact with things in the environment so you can things like bubbles that will get bigger and you can like bounce yourself off them or okay. things like platforms that you can land on or um, things that will just kind of ping you across the map to try and get to where you need to go. And it seems like there's different ways to like complete things. There are certain levels where it's like, well, this, you have to kind of go this way. But once you're down there, you can kind of figure out where you're going. And there's two modes. There's like a regular like difficulty and then a hard difficulty. And then within that, there's also normal like point based mode and also a like tourist mode where you can just play the game and you've not got to worry about points or anything you can right. just get to the end and um, which i liked and which i played it on because it was just said do you want to relax and do golf and i said yes please yeah. um because you streamed this didn't you yes i did yeah. i streamed it this week and i did i really enjoyed it i'm not great at it because i just i didn't think i was gonna be but it's it's quite difficult in places some of the levels are quite easy and there's like things to collect like little I know what they are. They're like mana kind of uh, droplets so you can collect. And if you get the green ones and you stop moving, you collect the green one. If you get a blue one, you have to take it all the way to the end to collect it. So it's like a hundred or so in each um, world. Right. And there's eight worlds, um, all with different kind of... So the first world is like a tutorial world. The second one's those same mechanics. And the third world is a water world. Mm -hmm. So your physics change on how your ball like moves. So you have to kind of like compensate for the like drift of the low gravity of the water mm-hmm. because you're you're underwater um and there's all different kinds of things to include there's also like a machine world and an oasis and a cosmos which i assume mm. will be like low grav stuff yeah. as well mm-hmm. um but it's really interesting and it's really pretty as well like visually looks really really nice lots of bright colors and like different kind of you know settings that are all really nice Mm -hmm. and i just think if you like golf games and you fancy yourself a little story-based one where you're playing kind of crazy golf then i do think it's a one that i think will give people a lot of fun it's not i don't think it's an an incredibly long game yeah but i think you can keep replaying levels to like get all the collectibles and stuff and Mm -hmm. and do that kind of thing i think that people will really enjoy that um it's their i think it's their first game um from this the indie studio that developed it um, it's available on Steam now, and I don't think it's available on anything else, but I think if it went to Switch, I think it would do really well on Switch right, as well yeah. because yeah. you can play it with a controller. Um, and I do think it would just benefit, like, it would do quite well on the Switch, mm-hmm. I think. So yeah. I think it's a really good game, and I think it's really pretty, and I would recommend it to people who enjoy platformers and want something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I found was that sometimes the trajectory was a little bit off, like... I couldn't always tell where I was because you're kind of on the side. You've got a free cam to move around and find the the hole and stuff. But right. um, you can't always necessarily see where your ball is. Like they'll be like behind a tree and you can see like, the outline of the ball, but you can't actually really see what's around. Okay. So there's a, cu- a couple of times where I was like, I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to have to reset the entire level so I can go back to the beginning. I guess that's a shame in a in a golf game where yeah. you know, it's kind of yeah. kind of a, something that should be happening should be should be working really yeah but that's the only time where i was kind of minor thing. frustrated and most of the time it was my fault because i got myself in a situation where i was really far away from where i was supposed to go so right um, and also every time you land on something in the environment if it's a movable thing like if it's a cloud going from left to right mm-hmm. if you land on it it'll stop moving so you've right. not got to worry about like the kind of contending with that which i kind of liked but other times i was a bit like oh i kind of wish it kept going to the right so yeah. i could like 
jump onto the next thing. Because if you don't jump onto it at the exact right moment, you're like too far away from something else. Right, right. But um, there's like checkpoints and levels that are quite long as well. So I do, yeah, I think it's I think it's really good. And it's like a really interesting take on a, a golf game, which I think is okay. quite a lot of fun. Yeah, well, that's nice. Especially, I guess, if you need like a, a, like a palate cleanser or something as well, it's ideal yeah. for that sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. Lovely. Well, that was, um, I should say, that was sent to us by uh, the Indie EXP, uh, who are a PR company on behalf of... Uh, Lamplight Forest. So thank mm, you, thank Alex, you for sending that to us. Thanks. Yeah. Well, now back to those losers doing the podcast, Ugh, I guess. Boring. Well, wasn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. I loved yeah, it. Love those really guys. Good. Uh, they sounded so nice. Um, it's time for question two now. Comes from Callum Straw. Hey, Bap. Mike Ibarra allegedly said that customer support and Q- QA jobs are not long term jobs, thoroughly undermining the important work both departments do. However, this is not an uncommon thing about. A th- thought about various departments, whether it be the idea that anyone can do that job or that certain jobs are stepping stones slash gateway jobs into the industry. So when do you think certain departments will, within the industry, such as QA, customer support, marketing, etc., will get a, get the recognition they deserve? Personally, I hope it's soon. But speaking specifically about QA and some of the big, a, tri- uh, sorry, big AAA companies, my expectations are very low. Would love to hear your thoughts on this. Kiss, kiss, Callum. Thank you, Callum. Thanks, Callum. I have some notes. Oh. You want some notes? Yeah, about what's going on. There's um, been a big old kerfuffle in there. there. Has. Yeah, for some reason, Activision Blizzard have done a bad thing. Mm, this is strange. Not this treating their stuff with, with respect. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Blizzard specifically. Pacifically, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Blizzard, it is Pacific. Blizzard. Yeah. Did, oh, man. I mean, it, the more we hear about Blizzard, the more actually the mystique and excitement about that studio comes tumbling down uh especially in their like golden era but they were like it's 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 a common conversation that a point of conversation that actually blizzard were they could do no wrong up until a, a pretty much until they merged with activision yeah and then it's sort of they've they've made lots of very unpopular decisions but certainly like the behind the scenes stuff is awful yeah it's, really bad it's curious to me whether it was always like this or when they it, merged with activision was, yeah, it just got, or it got worse mm. but yeah but now they're making games that are annoying people too so it's i literally can't think of a single blizzard game that's coming out that i'm even remotely interested in no you're not interested in doblo not Dup- really Duplo? i played it when like the third one and now i'm just like i don't really want to play it it's a blizzard game and Screw them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have on, a yeah. bit from the article on Eurogamer by Ed Nightingale. Um, I'm just going to read what they wrote, basically. Mm-hmm. Activision Blizzard has said it's proud of Mark Ibarra's leadership following a disastrous company-wide meeting to discuss an internal employee satisfaction survey. During the meeting, Ibarra was asked several pre-screened questions on its supposed lack of stack, um, a supposed use of stack ranking for employee performance, the slashing of profit share bonuses from, 20, from 2022, and the announcement employees will be re- Returning, required to return to office working. However, Blizzard employees soon took to social media after the meeting to express their outrage at Ibarra's comments. As Game Developer reports, Blizzard is set to slash profits sharing share bonuses down to 58% across the company. In response, Ibarra commented, paraphrased, if you think the executives are making a lot of money and you aren't, you're living in a myth. While the drop in bonuses will affect all employees, it will have a greater impact on employees with a lower salary. Ibarra reportedly did not provide a clear action plan on retaining talent due to these changes, though elsewhere, Blizzard stated it would be offering new opening new offices in unnamed locations to act as hubs. Ibarra did respond, at the end of the day, if we want people to be happy, and if decisions about being happy don't align with where we're going, and you won't be happy, then you have to do what make that what will make you happy. Essentially saying don't Quit. like it don't go like away. it go away don't yeah. lump it exactly <laughs> employee concerns around financial difficulties were especially strong in the quality assurance and customer service departments to which Ivara reportedly replied some of our disciplines are not long term disciplines as Activision Blizzard spoke per- an Activision Blizzard spokesperson responded with these areas considered not long term disciplines because the company wants people to grow and take on expanded responsibilities and opportunity. QA testers at Activision Blizzard Studio Raven Software last year won a vote to unionize in order to better support employees in these departments. 
Um, and Activision Blizzard spokesperson told game developer, Blizzard stands by each of these statements and we're proud of Mike's leadership in tough moments. But if you go on Twitter and you look at people who work there, yeah. there was tweets that were like, I've never been more, I've worked in the industry for 10 years. I've never been more embarrassed of leadership and just general discontent. And lots of people employees. feeling really undervalued and, yeah. and unimportant, mm -hmm. uh, which is not, not a great thing for a leader to make their staff feel. No, no. I mean, it's, even if he is of the opinion and maybe has some stats to partially back up the idea that, okay, some people get into QA as a stepping stone because you get that in all industries. There are certain jobs that are a, a good way in, a foot in the door. Uh, even if he knows that some people are doing that, he must know that not everyone is doing that. Some mm -hmm. people probably actively want to be in QA or marketing in, in games or customer support. Uh, you know, Maybe it suits them. Maybe it's something they actively want to do that role or that role suits them because of their lifestyle for whatever reason. So to just say that publicly, that you're essentially a bit of a throwaway and we're not interested in... It's not even a public comment. It's to them. Yeah, well, yeah. directly <laughs> to them. Just... That's true. Your... It wasn't a statement. Yeah, out. yeah. yeah. you, you... You specifically. <laughs> uh, you're a short term. You're not a long term, whatever it was. The yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, that's terrible. I think we were talking about this before we actually started recording. And like, I think our main stance is that, God, more of them should unionize. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's good to hear that Raven have done that. I didn't know mm -hmm. that actually until this article came out. Uh, that was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, God, it sounds like a, a pretty, well, it must grind you down to hear that from the top, that that's basically what you're thought of. You're expendable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then to have this this slash of the profit sharing as well, it's uh, yeah, it's enough to make you think. Okay, you know what? I will go somewhere else if you can, but you can't always. So uh, yeah, it's sad news, really. Mm. Yeah, I think the the when do you think certain departments of the industry will get recognition? Yeah, is genuinely just when they are treated with respect because they make a point of make saying you can't treat me like this and i'll be we fine with strike. it we will all strike yeah. or we will all unionize i've said it before in regards to i think the hogwarts legacy discussion about developers being let go if the game doesn't sell well mm -hmm. but you know these things you need to unionize every Every industry has unions for a reason, especially in the country at the moment. We see a lot of these unions in action doing what is good work to try and get average people the money they deserve or the recognition they deserve. And things like ignoring QA and just focusing on things like customer service and marketing, their, their games wouldn't get sold if people didn't market the games or they didn't support the customers in their purchases or post game releases. You know, if people didn't post anything, if you didn't tell anyone about your game via the marketing department, then you wouldn't get any marketing done and no one would buy your game. So the thing about it is that whole iteration of I am invaluable and you need to realize that I am invaluable or you're going to be screwed very quickly um this guy's comments are just oh man i wish i was in the slack chat when he was making these comments just to see people's reactions mm. and like hear what they were saying apparently they could only react with emojis yeah during because <laughs> yeah. it was all done over zoom they had like a separate slack chat that they were all talking mm -hmm. in but the the emojis were the only reaction in zoom and i wish i could have seen all those thumbs down <laughs> coming through yeah angry faces but unfortunately activision blizzard have learned absolutely nothing mm. from the last few years and I think that they haven't been punished really for what's been going on. Um, Bobby Kotick, still the CEO, still going around with Microsoft, holding their hand, saying, we want our deal, please. And then I can leave and have all my money. Um, he's, Golden parachute. Yes, exactly. Right. He's still there. This guy's still there. Him and um, I don't know if you read the article, um, the game was it game, game developer? developer um, yeah. They talked about how when Mike Ibarra took over, he was a co-like head with mm. um, a female member of staff. I can't remember what her name is. I'm sorry. And she left after a few months because she was like, we're doing the same job and I'm not being paid as much as he is oh, man. Brilliant. for the same okay. job. The article will be in the link. Down the article, yeah, yeah I'll put, put the it. link down below. But um, yeah, 
it's just, oh man, it's so crap. It yeah. makes me so angry for everyone who's in that company because I imagine it must, you must come away from it just feeling like absolute dirt mm-hmm. and just not wanting to put the effort in. Yeah, so. yeah. absolutely. And it's, they're, they're tough jobs to do. QA is at the the bottom of the development totem, totem pole, obviously. Um, customer support, you don't want to do that in in any industry, um, but it no. really is the 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 flip come you know comes downhill basically. The, the customer support is having to deal with the decisions made by the guys at the top in in you know the business side of things, and QA is having to try and identify issues within the development cycle, and then when AAA as as Callum says, you know when these more and more when these AAA games are released, they are very buggy. And there, it seems like there's been no QA testing at all. Mm. But the responsibility of that, ultimately, I think we all know, probably doesn't land at the feet of the QA department. Because no, the QA they, report these They things. will be doing their job and finding these bugs and reporting them. It'll either be that it's rushed or that there's not enough money to, to keep the production going any longer. So they, they've just got to release it or they hope that they can catch we'll the issues later. later. Yeah, the QA is yes. doing their job, but the public... Uh, perception, especially in the the core gaming uh, audience, is that oh well the QA's crap on this. Yeah. Do, do the QA team do anything? It's like I'm pretty sure they probably did do something. They maybe just it wasn't acted on at yeah. all for whatever reason. Um, I worked in QA only for six months, but I I felt really valued where where I worked. Um, I worked for Splash Damage in London uh, and. They took really good care of their staff, and that was probably helped a lot by leadership not saying, well, you know, your job, take it or leave it. We don't really care uh, about you. You're not really serving an important function, Uh, so you can, you know, if you just want to bugger off, that's that's absolutely fine. I wasn't paid a lot of money. It's not a high-paying role at all, Um, and I was living in a... (laughs) a room in a shared house with strangers because it is so bloody expensive to live in London Mm -hmm. and my wage was so low. So these, especially in the QA and customer service departments, they probably do rely quite heavily on this bonus. That's probably part of the, it's not just, they probably can't, they they probably can just about survive on their base pay. But I think one of the articles actually went into this as well, that uh, the the cost of living in that particular area is really high. Like yeah. the rent and costs are really crisis. really high. Mm-hmm. So they need this stuff. And then on top of that, to be told, nah, you're not that important. That's just that's just no good at all. Uh, he is 100 percent correct though. A lot of people do go into QA to to further their career. Yeah. I worked with a lot of people who were speci- who after voicing their intentions in terms of like the kind of stuff they'd be interested in in game development were specifically placed to work within certain departments as the QA liaison so mm. that they could work with those guys mm. like in the art department and stuff like that. So they would go attend daily meetings. I attended daily meetings in the sound department, not because I wanted to go into sound design for video games, just because it was the thing that seemed most relevant to my existing skill set. Mm-hmm. And I was very bored at that job and watched a lot of what culture and eventually left and worked for what culture. <laughs> so, you know, people do use it as stepping stones, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people yeah. do this job and they're passionate about it. I worked with several, you know, there's always senior people in QA. Yeah, that, of course. That, and that's their job. And, and people who've worked there for a long time to hear that, that's crap. That's no good at all. Beyond the the specific financial implications of not having enough money to pay your rent because you're in a lower paying department to then have the morale hit of being told you're unimportant is that's mm. i guess he thinks that because it is for some people it is a, a foot in the door and a stepping stone he he maybe rightly assumes that they're replaceable in the sense that mm. th- there will always be someone who wants your job yeah that doesn't mean it's okay to say there's a way to say it. yeah exactly <laughs> there's yeah. a way to say it doesn't it. justify it but i i imagine that is what he's actually getting at there or yeah yeah that's to that's, play devil's advocate yeah there may be further clarification provided but the fact that the follow-up we've got so far is that activision's really proud of him is yeah. <laughs> is not good yeah uh, yeah, bit of a disaster, really. Mm. I hope those um, I hope those staff uh, are all right, and yeah, they they get some something changes. Apparently, he's he's listening to team feedback, so we'll see if maybe some decisions he's are reversed. Looking at team emojis, <laughs> yes, he's looking at angry, frowny faces. And yeah, maybe that'll change. Mm. Hey guys, mm. unionize. 
Just unionize. That's good. You can put that on the side. We're not in a union. Hey guys. Hey guys. Unionize. unionize. Well, we're not in a union, but we're also not in a ginormous company. No, no, we're, we're not. not. And you know, if you have an issue, you can talk to us about. I it. just come in yeah. and like grab Adam by the throat, and I say, "Oi, hey, she give me a day off. Pay me double." And she was, she was warned. Yeah. She was close to being fired. No physical altercations whatsoever. No. Thank mm. you very much. So now I just come in and I just do this. Just from a yeah. distance. Yeah. Just, hey, it's like, hey. like a Jedi. Yeah. Peter, <laughs> Peter taps me on Give the me shoulder. I think I think Ashton wants to talk to us. <laughs> yeah. She's not using her words, though. No, she's trying to force choke me again. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's that time would be for weird, something. Wouldn't it? Yeah, it yeah. would be quite strange. Yeah. yeah. It's time for weird news. It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. If you'd like to submit some weird video game news to us, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and keep an eye out for the post that goes up towards the beginning of the week. You can reply there with your weird news. You might get a shout out right here. However, if you want to guarantee a shout out, you need to go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump supporters at a certain tier and become a podcast producer. Here's the podcast producers for this week. It's Nathan. It's also G.Y. Goliath. And Nexus Polaris. Hello, Duncan Wilson. And Nicole Hansen. All right, Ellie Nicholas. Oh, Gabrielle Philippink. What's going on, Melody Albany? <laughs> Look, it's Katie Garrod or Jared. And finally, but not leastly, Blake Thomas. Thanks, podcast producers. Thank you, podcast producers. Thank you, everyone. That was fun. Peter, yeah. what have you got? I've got some weird news here that was submitted by Connor Bennett at cbennett underscore 12 on Twitter. Uh, it's according to thegamer.com. And it reads... Among Us, Chait... Oh, now you want me to accept privacy. It loaded the page. Gave me four seconds. Oh, you want to scroll, do you? Okay. <laughs> Among Us changed the Med Bay Cross because it violated the Geneva Convention. <laughs> uh, subheading, <laughs> popularity in 2020 came at a price. Bit of a strange thing to say. Everything else in that game is fine, though. Mm. It doesn't... Yeah. It's all good. I have now just realized that this was published on the 2nd of February. So, um, but it's oh, okay. No, none of us olds. have read it. So, it's not super new news. It's old, but uh, never mind. Uh, Josh Coulson um, wrote this. You'd be forgiven for thinking Among Us launched in 2020, as that's when it was just, as, as that's when just about everyone started playing it. The hit game had actually been around for two years at that point. And while its renewed popularity during the pandemic was largely welcomed by Inner Sloth, it did also land them in hot water for violating the Geneva Convention. Oh, dear. I didn't know they were called Inner Sloth. Um, no, I don't know. Revealed via the Among Us Twitter account this week in the form of a fun fact, <laughs> the team behind the game explained why the crosses in its med bay changed colour once it took off. Quote, We had to change the colour of the med bay cross because we apparently violated the Geneva Conventions Act by making it red, Inner Sloth explained. The red cross was changed to blue, and that's why. Only early adopters of Among Us that were paying very close attention would have even noticed the colour change, and even those who did notice probably weren't all that bothered. It turns out that Among Us isn't the only game to have fallen foul of this. Mike Rose from indie studio No More Robots replied to the post, revealing it has failed to receive console certification on three different occasions for including a red cross in its games. Wow. Which is crazy. I didn't realise it was that serious. No. Uh, you might think a symbol as universally recognized as the Red Cross would be fair game for anyone to use, but that is definitely not the case, says the article. Used by various medical associations across the world, the website for the Canadian Red Cross explains, Misuse of this valued symbol distorts its meaning and its protective value for victims of conflict and the aid workers that assist them. This explains why Among Us uses a blue cross instead of a red one, and also why the majority of games that include med kits make them red with a white cross rather than the other way around. Do oh. they? I would have said white with a green cross is kind of the Green cross is common. I remember some early video games that were white with red crosses, but I maybe feel like that was I before remember it was that, sort of but, policed. But yeah, I, d I do, yeah. A red with a white cross does seem, does seem familiar. And the green cross, I think, is also, yeah, sounds... Sounds familiar. Mm. So there you go. If you do stumble upon a game with a red cross on its med kits or hospitals, it either doesn't know that that's a big no-no or it has been warned and it simply doesn't care. <gasps> Whoa, wow. don't Peter just Peter. put his naughty finger up yeah. to the camera. The point Did one. You? I wasn't even it's looking. It's rude no, to point. It was my index finger. Oh. It's rude to point. Um, so there you go. That's some news. I really like about Olds. that article that it finished after the first paragraph, but then it went on for two. I found yeah. it more interesting as it went on, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, me too, but the way that it that. went, they changed it, and it's changed. 
Yeah, some and people might have noticed, <laughs> some people might not yeah. have noticed. Anyway, here's why. Here's why. Oh, yeah, there's a weird, this isn't a related article. So I don't think anyone submitted this, but, I mean, this is a one-line thing. Did you realize that 17 years after the game came out, someone has finally re- found a very, very simple way to stop getting your head chopped off by the Chainsaw Man in Resident Evil 4? When he's about to do the animation where right. he beheads you, <coughs> seemingly all you have to do is pause the game and unpause it. So you pause buffer, and when it resumes... Leon goes like, ah, and he's getting his head chopped off, but then he just pushes him off, and oh. then you're fine. Oh. Huh. So that's oh. a one-hit kill, presumably. Normally, it's a one-hit kill. Yeah. Your head comes off, <coughs> but uh, now it just shows the animation of the blade like in his neck, and then he just does like oh, he's fine. a sort of shove animation. Just that... eat some broccoli. Oh, yeah, you'll be all right. He's all right. Wow. So, wow. It's taken nearly 20 years for that to apparently have been discovered. That's no one good. has ever paused the game. When no one. Not a single person. Off. No. I have some weird news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It comes from Paul Ansel on Facebook. Um, Eurogamer again, Tom Phillips. Um, Xbox fans are now tracking Sony's executive jet amidst potential Activision Blizzard deal discussions. Oh, yes. And then the subheading is plain to see. Like aeroplane. Oh, yeah. Sony fans are. Stations, no, Microsoft fine. fans. I was going to say, I thought you just said Sony, but yeah, I was like, I thought it would be Microsoft fans doing it. Yeah. Imagine if Sony fans were doing it, like, hmm, hope this doesn't happen. I'm yeah. going to track the plane. I don't think that, like, the, this, the, the news article is particularly funny. I just think that it's weird that people are doing yeah. this. Oh, yeah, people are mental. Um, right. Fans hoping to track the progress of Microsoft's beleaguered? Mm-hmm. Um, $68 billion Activision Blizzard deal are now monitoring flights made by executive private aircraft. Flights made by private jet owned by Sony have been used to back up suggestion of a meeting between Sony executives and Microsoft in early February. Publicly available flight information shows a Sony jet flying from London to Seattle, where Microsoft is headquartered around a month ago, for the first such visit in over 18 months before travelling on to LA. I just feel like we'd... They could be doing anything. There's so many game well, studios kind of what in they, Seattle. They, it's like that could... Okay. They later on say <laughs> right. they could have just been going to Bungie. Yeah. They yeah. could be um, doing anything. Online plane officiados uh, have confirmed the private jet used as one registered to Sony and operated by the company to transport its execs around the world, as reported by FOSS Patents, which is tracking progress on of Microsoft's deal. There is no confirmation of what Sony was doing in Seattle at the time, and my first thought was that it... C- was that the company could simply have been visiting its own team at Bungie. Still, this is indeed the level that we have reached in regards to the progress of Microsoft industry shaking deal, where people are now tracking executive planes. And then, so this account, this Twitter account, this is their tweet, and it, unhinged from the first line. Hard evidence. Sony executives flew from London to Seattle in a Falcon X, uh, 8X on February 6th, presuming to negotiate hashtag Call of Duty license with hashtag Microsoft. Mm. I'm so tired of this yeah. this whole thing. Me Either too. let them buy it or throw it out. Why does this keep everyone's just oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> so we frustrating. haven't yet had a like a, a big discussion about it because there's just so many facets to it. It develops every week and it's not interesting at all. We no. talked but about it, it just... when it first like got announced that they were buying it. And that was, I'm pretty sure, when we were like at home. It's just rubbish. Like mm. every week. Microsoft pulls their pants down and says, see, look, look how rubbish our games are. Let us buy it. And Sony's (laughs) like, but if they buy it, we won't have any money anymore, even though we've got 90% of the console market in Europe or whatever the hell it is that they've got. And Mm. it's just, I'm so tired of the, they're both massive companies. One of them a multi-trillion dollar company. I don't. I'm, I'm tired of them all playing, like, trying to play the tiny violin. <laughs> I don't care. Really, I don't care. It's I, also, I believe it is the right word, because it keeps, it's been, like, halted for monopolization in Europe, hasn't it? Or, like, some we country. It, and, yeah. UK blocked it. And, and I really liked when, was it Bobby Kotick? Probably. Oh, yeah, I think so. He it said, was, yeah. "Oh, if the UK block this, it'll be like the Death Valley for games." Like, yeah, he did cool, say, "Yeah, thanks." It's just Great. there's so much hyperbole thrown around, and the only thing that's going to really change is that the rich are going to get richer. so much richer. And yes, there will be a time where I d- I'm not. A f- I'm really gu- I'm just going off, on. I'm just we? so tired of I'm hearing about, about this. I'm so flipping tired of hearing about it. I also really like that they keep making promises about 
the deal, even though the deal. Yeah, hasn't they're, they're doing deals yet. with Nintendo. Yeah. They don't even own it yet. That's fine. Yeah, like, we just, promise it'll be on Call of Duty. And people were like, bold it's all just to say a that. huge PR spin. <laughs> like every week, there's a new PR twist and turn. And yes, there may come a time where Call of Duty is not on PlayStation, and that is going to be a shame. Maybe having it for ten years isn't such a bad deal, and then maybe it going on Game Pass will be great. I don't know. Mm. I just I'm tired. I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't want it to happen because I don't think consolidation of that size is necessarily no. a good no. thing for the industry. But at the same time, you've worn me down. I don't. I actually <laughs> don't care anymore. <laughs> just, yeah. just, just have, just finish it, please. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they're not going to give up, are they? Even if it keeps getting rejected, they're just going to be like, "What if we, uh, be, what did, if we did, did this, this instead?" instead? <laughs> the, it will. I think it will go through, but maybe with some compromises. Yeah. They'll, mm. uh, but please, can we get to that bit now? Yeah. I can't, sorry, were you see your weird news done? Oh, uh, it wasn't. But I was bored of reading it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It they're was, tracking the plane. They're, they're tracking, tracking the, the plane. plane. People that need to calm really down. Into it. Got too much time on their hands. I definitely misheard what you said as, at the beginning as well. Like when I was saying about Sony, I I thought that the story was that people were seeing if um, Microsoft and like Activision were getting together, but like no, people are seeing if. Sony are talking to Microsoft about whether oh what's going to happen to Call of Duty mm. yeah that's even that's actually a bit sadder than because <laughs> yeah. that's like one step removed that's like assuming the deal happens it'd be one thing to like see if like oh look they're having more meetings with Microsoft and Activision what could mm, maybe that means that it's more likely to happen or something mm. but then beyond that it's like if it happens oh look they're talking to Sony are they and if they are what how do you know what they're saying yeah it's stupid i also just like that they were like they could be going to there or they could just be going to visit bungie yeah yeah like good job hard evidence also sony doesn't it's not just playstation there could be any number of reasons that sony jet was flown yeah mm. to seattle beyond games i uh... maybe they just wanted to go visit their family you yeah, know? Maybe they just exactly. Went to yeah. The straws are being clutched. Mm. And they wanted to go to the Windy City. Mm-hmm. Yes. Look at that big needle. Plane. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Go see Fraser. <laughs> eh? There you mm. go. There's go all and my be sleepless. All my, <laughs> all my Seattle references. I've got some weird news. Thank you to everyone who sent this in. This is from PC Gamer. Valve lured 40,000 Dota cheaters into a trap before banning them in one day. <gasps> Wow. Brilliant. With more than a little braggadocio, Valve has announced that it's permanently wow, banned over... That's a good word. Yeah. Made up. Banned over <laughs> 40,000 Dota 2 accounts for cheating. In a post to the official Dota 2 blog yesterday, the company revealed that it had constructed a cunning trap or a trunning cap to catch thousands of players that were using third-party software to access information used internally by the Dota client that wasn't visible during normal gameplay, lending them an unfair advantage in-game. It worked like this. Once it became aware of the exploit, Valve released a patch that created a section of data inside the game client that would never be read during normal gameplay, but that could be read by these exploits. Valve says that every single one of the accounts banned yesterday had read from that secret data, giving the company extremely high confidence that every ban was well deserved. Mm. And then it goes on to talk about banning things for about four more paragraphs. But (laughs) that's essentially what happened. Mm. 40,000 accounts. Wow. It's pretty impressive. That's what you get. Cheaters. Yeah. Cheaters, Cheaters never, never prosper. prosper. Yeah. No. Cheaters um, always get lured into traps and banned by that. Apart from big head mode, that's a good cheat. That's a good cheat, yeah. yeah. You can do that one. Cheat. Or yeah. like spawn in a bus <laughs> or a jet <laughs> yeah. to fly to Seattle in yes. Grand Theft Auto. Mother load. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Mother load is a good cheat. Yeah. It is and a you good literally cheat. prosper as well. Mm. So there we are. It's time for question three. It's from Rock Reese, who says, Hey Bap, I've talked with a friend about video games that changed the game. The game in this sense being the video game industry. It's very complicated. <laughs> for, for example, Gears of War coming out with its cover shooting system basically defined the 360 generation with third person games and is still felt now. Or how Breath of the Wild has changed everyone's approach to open world games in many ways. Like how you will always have gliders now. That is why I thought Elden Ring had to win Game of the Year, because even not having played it, I think we're going to see the effects of this game for years in caps. Sorry for the long explanation, but now that I hopefully described it well, what video games would you personally say changed the game? Before you answer this question, Mm. I have a a query that Mm. I was thinking about, but I couldn't pinpoint what first did it. 
what game introduced grappling hooks? Because oh recently there's been a big influx, especially in Sony games, of grappling hooks. Everyone's got a grappling hook. Everyone's grappling everywhere. And I just don't know where it started, but it's all you can see. Every game has well, got a grappling it's sort of, hook. I guess it's probably evolved over time. Like I bet there's an 8-bit grappling hook out there mm. like in the 80s or something. But there, yeah. there will be one game that I'm did it in, the, in the, the past. The like current trend. Kind of third person, because what, like yeah. Ratchet and Clank... Rift, uh, Rift Apart had Doom Eternal had a Doom grappling Eternal. hook Uncharted Horizon had Uncharted 4 had God a grappling hook God of War basically yeah. has a grappling hook yeah it's weird mm. it's, I've noticed it a lot in games There's I'm a like lot. oh a grappling hook yeah. there will be one and people will be putting it in yeah, the comments yeah let me know which one because I, I couldn't think of think what of it, it was head, <laughs> but that's what the initial thought was like grappling hooks <laughs> what's added grappling hooks mm. and everything so Someone when did uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed Syndicate come out that had one 2000 and uh, 14? 14? I yeah, want to say 14. Somewhere, somewhere in the 2010s, yeah. Mid-10s, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so I've brought a couple. I think GTA 3 mm. is a game that deserves a lot of recognition for being really the first, certainly the first major mainstream best-selling um, open-world sandbox city. Um, I'm not going to say that there were absolutely no open-world third-person sandbox cities before then but it really was the one um and that game unfortunately because uh, i really like it personally because i've played it a lot but unfortunately that game is not as fondly remembered uh, as the other games in the quote-unquote the trilogy the definitive edition yes the best <laughs> versions of those games <laughs> yeah uh, you know, oh man, by... remember that? <laughs> Just remember. I've got it. I, I have it and I God. still haven't played it. I've only played GTA 3 on it and then a tiny bit of the other two for um, like review purposes mm -hmm. at the time. But uh, I really liked GTA 3 at the time. And yeah, Vice City is remembered as being the, you know, this cool, stylish one. San Andreas was arguably the most kind of advanced one because it was just the latest one the you know, the third one along the line. So those two are probably remembered better than GTA 3 itself. But really, GTA 3 changed the game, mm, I would did. argue. Yeah, great uh, game. The game in this sense being the video game industry. Yes, yeah. indeed. Um, also, again, not the first, even within its own series, but Oblivion, I think, was mm. quite an important one. I mean, you could argue that Morrowind like, did what Oblivion did before Oblivion did it. But, but I don't like the menus and... I don't know what I mean. No, and also <laughs> sometimes it's not about, we did a list on this actually, it's not always about the game that did it first, but a game that did it in a very popular, mm. best-selling, high-achieving way. Yes. And Oblivion, I think, having those sort of open-world fantasy uh, maps and even just things like, my my like strongest memory of Oblivion and having that feeling of I must get this game and I must play it is I was watching Peter's Gamer Uncle play Oblivion and his character walked into a shop or something and he walked over to a display and picked up like an apple mm. off a plate and then you know in Oblivion it was a bit glitchy and then everything like, yes, like that jumps. and when he picked up this thing I suddenly realized whoa wait what all of those things are unique yeah. Mm. individual items that you can pick up, number one. And number two, they all have like physics in them. Mm. So you can jump on that table and kick everything off and it will all just move around. I I, I felt like at the time I'd never seen anything like that before. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, even just having a whole bunch of items that can move around and be picked up in a game world, that's one thing that Oblivion did very well early mm. on. For me with Oblivion, it was watching my friend walk down a, a beautiful green meadow mm. and pluck a flower. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what? You Cute. can pick the flower. You can just pick, just pick flat. It was just a... You can pull much, a butterfly out of the air. Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> much, like, uh, much like your experience, it was just a level of interactivity that I had never experienced mm. before. Mm -hmm. And I was chasing that high until we got the terrible PS3 port. So. Yeah. <laughs> Bully for me. Mm. So those are a couple from me. Oh, I have Sam too. Yeah. Uh, specifically, they're both the same franchise. Um, Half Life slash Half Life Two, in the sense of the creativity and freedom it gave to mm. modders and the ability to take the assets and create so much new content, like you know Stanley Parable, Gary's mods, all like the other stuff that has spawned from Half Life and Half Life Two, um, and also. 
in the VR sphere, I think Half-Life Alex was a huge leap forward for VR in a lot of the sense of the UI, in the fact that nothing is in your vision unless you look for it, like everything's on your wrists. So you have to look on how much ammo or health you've got by like moving your wrists around, um, building a world and a narrative and an interactable environment in VR that has, I think, one of the best like looking VR kind of worlds that you can be in, um, making a like spooky and atmospheric game whilst also having your player look like an idiot by screaming at nothing because they're in a room stood up with two little things um i just think half-life alex is a was a really big stepping stone and it got a lot of people into vr i mean not as many as i think should because i think everyone should play half-life alex but um i think it just was a big step forward for vr and showing big studios how to do vr properly in the sense of not making your players motion sick and we look at like things like horizon call of the mountain and how that functions and that a lot of the elements that i see in that are very similar to kind of things you play as or you do in half-life alex like a lot of the physics and a lot of the ui stuff's quite similar so i think half-life alex was a big step forward for the vr industry the game in question in this instance being vr video games (laughs) so yes yeah, that's what I think. Excellent. I've got some quick fire ones uh, presented without context and focusing sort of from the mid to late 90s and onwards. So stop me if you disagree. Uh, Gran Turismo. Oh, I can't believe you said that. It's so wrong. <laughs> GoldenEye 007. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Halo. Mm-hmm. Half Life 2. Mm-hmm. Bioshock. Gears of War. Yeah. Uncharted 2. The Last of Us. Breath of the Wild. Half Life Alex. Mm-hmm. Did you write Half Life Alex 2? I did. Half Life Alex 2. <gasps> Confirmed. I wish. <laughs> Um, yeah, I yeah. know they said Bioshock as well. That's definitely one. I think they've all Halo. done stuff, especially Uncharted 2, paving the way for characters that don't shut up mm. and uh, yeah. third-person mm. action games. Yeah. Obviously, Uncharted itself inspired by Tomb Raider, but definitely to- the subsequent Tomb Raider reboot then inspired by Uncharted, mm-hmm. I would say. Uh, the Last of Us, that's the reason why we have so many moody third-person narrative uh, action games now, yeah. um, especially from Sony's first party. And I think the rest, uh, they speak for themselves, really. Mm. Uh, they all defined their their eras in various ways. So, yeah. Portal as well, maybe. You Portal. Portal did you? No. Uh, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, yeah, I think, Modern was Warfare. was a really big one. Yeah. Um, I think Stardew Valley as well. Stardew Valley, sure, yeah. Uh, unpacking? No, not unpacking. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's, God, there's a lot of very influential games out there. I've got one there. that's not necessarily for the better, but yeah. uh, Goat Simulator, perhaps. Mm. Uh, or something, oh, yeah. maybe not, that's Borderlands, not the one. Board, like Borderlands and Borderlands 2, that sense of humor that it brings into the game that people keep trying to replicate. And mm. right. Borderlands quite... 3 tried to replicate it and, and they Wonderlands. Couldn't, yeah. <laughs> couldn't yeah. do it. Now, whether it's Goat Sim or perhaps an earlier game, but mm. the the... This is designed so YouTubers can play it. The meme yeah, game, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Game. yeah the reaction game. games. Yeah, um, mm. yeah. I don't don't enjoy those too much. Mm. Uh, but there we are. There's there's just a handful. It's time, everybody, to move on. We're going to time travel now to the big discussion. Oh. It's big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion. We've time traveled. It's now tomorrow at the time of earlier in the podcast. But yesterday, if you're watching at the time of release. Time is crazy. It's Friday. Anyway, uh, Joe, our wonderful uh, Discord mod. Thank you. That's the name of the software. Mm -hmm. uh, Has asked us a question. And Joe says, what did you think of Suicide Squad? Great question. Mm. Last night at the time of recording, Thursday night was PlayStation's State of Play mini stream was about 50 minutes or thereabouts. Yeah, yeah sort of five, I think, yeah. What did you think generally of State of Play? Uh, there, I mean, there wasn't m- much there for me. Mm. Um, some of the VR games looked looked kind of interesting, but I don't have VR and I don't, I'm not in a hurry to pay money for it. Um, I guess the only things there that did interest me were things I was already interested in, which are Chia mm. um, and Resident Evil 4, which I didn't even watch because I didn't want to see anything. I'm like, I- I'm going to play that anyway. So I don't want the spoilers. So I just like, I watched it after the, I didn't watch it live. So I was watching on YouTube and I just 
flick through and every 10 seconds I would just see a frame and I was like, okay, okay, that's just an, that's just what I want to see. That's just enough. A single still <laughs> mm-hmm. and another one and another one mm-hmm. and that's it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you guys? I am really excited for Chia. I've been kind mm-hmm. of hoping for a release date for that for ages and it's coming next month and it's going to be on PlayStation Plus Extra, which my boyfriend already pays for. So I'm going nice. to get it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the only thing that really tickled my fancy. Mm. Um, there was that, what was the one? The fairies. Oh, Goodbye Volcano High. Goodbye Volcano, Volcano High. High. Looks kind of nice. That had big uh, sort of teeny bop angst drama mm. to it, it kind of life is strange like, life is strange yeah, yeah. that yeah. kind of stuff but set under the pretense of them being dinosaurs which is mm. a bit odd but you know that hey. will certainly find an audience there was sure. also a weird game that i can't th- figure out like if i liked it or not humanity which came from the creative oh, tetris yeah. effect mm. which was like a oh, bunch yeah, the of dog like one. colorful people fighting off against like people in black yeah, and white that's exactly yeah. what i thought like it was lemmings. literally lemmings but sometimes they fight each other with yeah. lightsabers. yeah and then also you can like create your own levels mm. or play creative Share levels them. which was kind of interesting um and towards the end all the people got came together and turned into a giant person and it was just legs and i thought if we were live if we were live be right is this for the mm. is this is, is this, this legs yeah yeah Resi 4 looked great. Um, yeah. Sorry, Peter. Spoiler. It looked really it good. It does look really, it does yeah, look really good. good. As I say, the three stills that I saw looked great. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Goodbye Volcano High looks interesting. It was, they, there were a handful of VR2 titles there as well that they threatened. None of them really stuck out to me, but there was one in particular that I felt kind of bummed out that it was a VR game because I thought that I would probably end up enjoying it quite a lot if it was not a VR game. Um, I think it's the one where you like move through your life or before something your before, your eyes. Eyes. before yeah. your eyes okay which presumably is actually detecting your actual blinks mm. yeah instead well, like when you blink it'll move forward well that's yeah. also what they're doing with the switchback or what it's called the um dark pictures yeah. oh yes yeah, yeah with the back. mannequins got, like weeping angel style yeah. monsters yeah. it's clever but it's I, clever. I think that that before your eyes is potentially was a regular game before it's a VR game. Oh. Using like a webcam uh, eye okay. tracking, uh, I think. Okay. I think we've done a list about yeah, it before. Yeah, so it came out in 2021. <sighs> that's a shame so because I mean, I get that that's like the whole point of it is, yeah. is the blinking aspect, but I just think the story it tells looks quite interesting and I would quite like to experience it. But you it don't have to play it in VR. Your controller. Yeah, 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 yeah if I could just button. blink with a button, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. that, that was, you know, there was, there was some stuff there. I think on the whole it was nothing really that exciting to write home about but mm-hmm. the main event of course was uh suicide squad kills the justice league rocksteady have been making this game presumably for eight years but yeah. or at the very least it's been eight years since arkham knight came out they hammered home over and over again that this is set in the arkham verse five years after the events of arkham knight mm-hmm. so we saw a good chunk of gameplay and then an awful lot of buzzwords from talking heads at the uh, at the studio what did you guys make of Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League? Are you interested in it? Are you more or less interested in it than before? And do you think it looks good? I'm less interested in it than before. Why does it have to be in the Arkhamverse? If they had released this, or if they'd shown this game off and said, hey, we've got a new like DC game coming out. You play as a Suicide Squad. It's kind of a live servicey thing. Play with your friends. Here you go. Enjoy. Then at least it could attempt to stand on its own merits but like to actually try and pull people in in the earlier stages stages of development and say it's an arkham game (laughs) you're gonna be playing as someone else but it's an arkham game Mm -hmm. you know i think some people might have had in their minds perhaps optimistically that it might be quite like a batman arkham game where you know it's kind of you you've got set objectives and you're going around yeah maybe in a in a multiplayer format but kind of in other in most other ways quite similar to a batman arkham game similar combat and stuff like that perhaps um but no it's kind of i've seen comparisons to anthem being made Mm. and looks uh, a lot like marvel's avengers yeah marvel's Mm. avengers as well like for me the to be fair like i've not actually got around to playing any of the arkham games i've seen a lot of them and i can appreciate them for what they are and i've just it's just one of those things on my list that i've just need to play but so i'm not like super protective and like precious about that but i do think that this is i might have given this a go anyway if it had been something in that kind of family Mm. um but the fact that it's got so much sort of verticality and far more kind of open openness 
than I expected. It's just far less appealing to me. Mm. It's almost like the because this game could come out and blow us all away. Like yeah. it could yeah. genuinely be surprisingly really, really good. But I don't think they've put their best foot forward. And as you said about setting it in the Arkham verses, they've almost set themselves up for failure because mm. it's clear that the gameplay is nothing like it. They've they've uh, they showed in the trailer that they've got returning characters from the Arkham games. Yeah. They've still got Nolan North voicing uh, Cobblepot Penguin, Penguin yeah. and uh, and so on. What? I think I just Cobblepot. Yeah. Cobblepot. It's a fun name. Oswald. It's a good name. Oswald, Aussie. Uh, so that it ties in. They've they've already got some of their built-in law that they can they can do. But I think beyond that, people are going to be expecting a certain level of quality and a certain level of well, a certain style of gameplay, and that is just not there. But also, are they? Because we knew it wasn't going to be like a no. Arkham I did, game. You're right. No, we like we, we did know that. We knew yeah. that it wasn't. It's not a Batman Arkham game. But we, we knew, knew it that, was. But some people might not. Yeah, but most we didn't know it was probably even in the same universe. Yeah, maybe not. They probably yeah. heard that and was like, it okay. It doesn't have the Arkham name in the. It title, doesn't have the Arkham least. name in no. the title. The, I just. Or, no. Oh, we frozen. Yeah. We're making good points, and we have frozen on the yeah. camera. Are we back? We're back. Okay. Um, yeah, the only thing about it that we now know, we mm. didn't know before yesterday that it was set in the Arkham universe. So we did. Those, did we? Yeah, they did. Oh, they did they'd say kind that. Of, okay, fair but enough. They, but they were really hammering home. But, yesterday. but, really but we have them, also yeah. seen a little bit of gameplay of mm. this game a little while ago, and it looked more interesting than it did yesterday. Mm. Um, I just there's just so much going on and like so much happening that didn't kind of it looked a bit aimless. It's mm. just like go into a big area and shoot to your heart's content. Enemies, yeah. Um, yeah. and I mean some of the mechanics looked quite fun, like the traversal, like boomerangs, kind of teleportation attack, and the weapon play. Swinging, and, yeah, swinging rope thing, and mm. the way that you can in, like engage with other uh, iconic villains by. Get, getting their gear set and like the Bane thing that they were talking about. Mm. Um, it's an interesting looking game, but I am I'm concerned mainly because I don't want to have to play it in four player. And if I'm not playing it in four player, how does it work? Because surely these four characters are always going to have to be in these situations because that's well, the whole thing. Bots, They're the suicide. Mm. Yeah, but, but having rubbish. seen the gameplay, unless these bots are like so well fine-tuned i'll be frozen again so oh. well fine-tuned that you know like they're the best bots in any game ever i can't see them functioning very well in this yeah. kind of environment it's true i feel like if there was if if it was more in line with the traditional arkham experience for example and you were walking down a corridor then the AI would probably be able to handle following yeah. you down a corridor mm -hmm. but this game looks incredibly fast-paced there was a very, very small amount of time in the gameplay that we were shown that any of the characters were on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, you you know, most of them were hovering and flying and zip lining and stuff. And it it did look really fast paced and genuinely quite fun. And I reckon once you get the hang of it, that it will be pretty flipping fun to play. Mm -hmm. But because of that style of gameplay, the areas need to be really big and expansive and l with lots of room for you to move around. And I feel like you're going to lose some of the perhaps the focus and mm. not necessarily charm but you know what i mean like again it's being in the arkham verse and remembering what those games were like I, it's going to be very different and that's not necessarily a bad thing but it was when they started looking at gear levels yeah. and stats battle and pass. Red arrows there's a cosmetic and battle pass and you're constantly going to be putting new loot in and stuff and loot levels and, it and was all the just... guns were like completely customizable mm. and i and i said last night when we were watching it i'm too stupid for that yeah i can't do that let <laughs> me pick up a gun stuff. i don't want to have to i don't have to think about this i do mm. think though Visually, yeah. looked great. It did. Like Metropolis looked really, really yeah. pretty. All the character designs were really good. Mm -hmm. They've made Harley Quinn look like Margot Robbie when she's not got her makeup on, which is kind of interesting. But I think that it looks really, really great. Mm. And this that's is at least thing, one though, good thing. With it being Metropolis, like it did look good. But that's another way that this there's just such a contrast from the Arkhamverse because, you know, Gotham is by design a dark, dirty, rainy, mm. gloomy place. And they talked about why Metropolis wasn't that because it's, you know, the city of tomorrow and it's intentional that they made it so bright and, and you know, open air and or shiny and stuff but it, it that's just another way that like you put these side by side and it's like, yeah, it's all Arkhamverse. It's like, well, yeah, but it in some ways it looks very different. I mean, in terms of actual 
the graphical style you can see you know when you look at someone like penguin you can see obviously it's the same yeah. mm. uh you know at, at its core it is the same but uh yeah you put them side by side and it's like that's another way that this differs so much from mm. the previous games i'm also interested to find out if wonder woman's on our side yes because it yeah, looks it like, she, like she, might she might be that's one Whether thing that she I'm... maybe doesn't turn I'm, i was like oh maybe she doesn't i really like the look of the the story like all the cutscenes they've shown us look great mm -hmm. and the voice acting looks great but then it was when they got into the gameplay and they're all quipping away with, you can tell from just a handful of lines that you're going to hear endlessly. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm, I'm too bad. That's going to leave a mark. And it's just, yeah, that stuff. I mean, it's it's a video game yeah. and that stuff's going to be in it. But And we knew that this was going to be live service. That wasn't a secret. But I don't yeah. think we really appreciated quite how live service it was going to be until we sh saw a bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they did the developer talking heads, you could not move for buzzwords that usually people relate to live service games. Yeah. And as we've talked about on this podcast before, everybody wants a piece of that live service pie because if you can even get a crumb of that pie, it's incredibly lucrative. Mm. And they said, you know, we're going to keep updating it. There's going to be new characters, that sort of stuff. So once you finish the main story, you know, you can still keep playing. But what I'm really worried about is that I'm going to be there for the story and that's what I want. And I'm going to get two hyper-focused introductory missions that are really narratively heavy. Yeah. Mm. And then it's going to open up and the map's going to have like daily objectives and you got to log in and do your dailies and all that kind of stuff, just like Marvel's Avengers did. And it's going to completely lose me. And you're going to be yeah. traversing the same environments over and over again, doing similar sort of wrote objectives to then get a cutscene, And that's not really what I want from a game like well, this. Well, even if it's not like that and the story, they have, you know, designed some interesting missions, I wonder what just the longevity of it is. So mm. it might be a decent quality single, well, single play, you know, story, story mode, uh, but it might only last a few hours. And really they want you to just get that done and get it out of the way so that you can start playing their proper live service mode. You know, yeah. that would be my concern as well. Rocksteady leadership, obviously quite notoriously left uh, sort of middle of last year as well, which could mean anything. But the fact that this game has, if they have been working on it the full eight years since Gotham Knights, mm. uh, uh, sorry, since uh, Arkham Knight came out, uh, all, so, yeah. many, so many Gotham Oof. Arkham games, uh, then, you know, this has clearly been a project that hasn't necessarily been in trouble, but it's it's been one that they've taken, it's taken a lot of refining to get to the mm. stage that we're well, at Well, it's already had a pushback, hasn't it? It was meant to come up last year. Yes. And before we came in here, Fraser made the point of them. So despite the fact that there is a release date of the end of May, mm. uh, they made a point of saying that it's coming this year, mm. which is a bit vague and doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's going to be hitting that release date that they initially yeah. promised. So... Yes, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. It's not necessarily what I would really want from a Rocksteady DC game, but its quality remains to be seen. My faith in it is a little shaken, though, after I this. feel really stupid that I didn't realise it was a live service game until you literally just said, we know it was a live service game. I didn't know <laughs> they, that. They sort of tiptoed like, around when it for I was, a long time because it almost feels like a dirty word. When I was watching it, I term, was like, sorry. this sounds like a live service game like but mm. i was like mm, maybe it's not because i don't know if it is mm. and then yeah, i guess i just found out that it is it's not like shaking my faith in it in oh, oh hello camera Flicker can you camera. please behave she only a couple minutes left it's not shaking my faith in it in the sense that when i heard it was a live service game i i kind of switched off immediately mm. so and i wasn't really surprised by anything i saw in that i thought maybe in some ways i was surprised in a positive way i thought it looked better than i expected and yeah, like some of the cutscenes and, and things like, like that seemed more uh, kind of developed than I expected them to be. But yeah, it's um, I wasn't overly shocked by what was yeah. shown to us. And, yeah. I love the setting. I love the premise. Flipping Wonder Woman, getting Flash in the lasso of truth. And he, yeah. he said, you know, he get, he, the spell's broken and he says, you have to kill us all. That's the mm -hmm. only way to do it. And I'm like, yes, this sounds super interesting. Like, I want to I want to experience this story, but then I know that I'm going to be flying around this big empty city yeah. <laughs> doing oh, repetitive objectives to get loot, uh, to grind... Oh, we've frozen again. Ooh. To get my loot gear up so that I can do a later mission. Like, it's just... That's going to really appeal to some people, and that's great. And I'm, I really hope you enjoy it. And I am going to play this game, but 
man, I just wish it was perhaps the, the, the story and the premise feels like it might be wasted on this kind of game. Mm. And that's the reason that I'm there, really. So there we are. What well, did you think? Yeah. Let us know in the comments below. What do you thought about Suicide Squad Killer Justice League? And if yeah. any other games at the state of play took your fancy. Yeah, what else did you like or not like? Yes. State of play? Absolutely. You can tell us all about it at uh, Team Triple Jump pretty much everywhere you look. YouTube.com and Twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. It's where all of our videos and live streams happen. Um, when we're streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, we are modded by Lord Brotovich, Trialing Badger, and Mr. Black. If you've got Amazon Prime, part of the package that you are paying for already includes a Twitch sub. No extra cost. It's already in there. So you can spend that on us if you like. Uh, Twitter.com and Facebook.com forward slash Team Triple Jump for video and live stream announcements, legacy video content, Twitch stream highlights of the week, yes. bits of weird news, loads of stuff. All put there. Ooh, all put there. <laughs> this camera by is so unhappy. Fraser, <laughs> we'll get to the end. Um, TikTok.com forward slash at Team Triple Jump where all of our TikToks are posted by Ashton and patreon.com forward slash team triple jump for loads of tears. Maybe we'll be able to afford a new camera cable um, if you head to Patreon. Audio and... listeners, it is flickered about seven or eight times during Peter's sentence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so head to Patreon and look at all the tears. Please do. Like. Please. Please do. We have a website, triplej.mup, triple J, you .mp, spells jump, it's very clever. If you want to join our Discord, triplej.mup forward slash Discord, chat with our wonderful community. And on Discord, we're modded by Jack, Joe, Tori, and Hollowise. It's to do something. Well, they will do it. All right. Mm. If you listen to the podcast in its audio form, it's on to triplej.mup forward slash podcast or check out any of the live stream VODs if you missed one, triplej.mup forward slash VODs. And if you want to book a cameo from any of us three or Jake's chickens, you're triplej.mup forward slash cameo. You want to buy some sick and cool merch like that? Uh, like that? And this? Like that? Like that? You can go to triplejumpshop.com and make sure you're following at triplejumpshop on Twitter for the latest match announcements. Instagram, Twitter. Why not follow Peter and Ashton on them at that Peter Austin and at Scrambled Ashton and myself just on Twitter at Confused underscore Dude. We do lists every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday being the joint stream. Where is it? On YouTube. YouTube, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for camera, Friday, being solo streams on Twitch. Worst games ever is fortnightly, Friday for patrons of a certain tier, Sunday for everyone else. The podcast is every Saturday and we do shows all the bloody time. We shot a show earlier today. We're all tired and feel a bit sick because of it, that being main menu. Why not leave a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms and it's free and it helps. Mm. So thank you. Triple Jump Shop. We got loads of flipping cool merch on there. Go check it out, please. Mm. Get all these cool items that we're wearing today. Oh, camera that we're wearing today. And also we've got a, a whole fresh wave of logo merch. You've got your mugs, you've got your hats, mm -hmm. you got your hoodies, all sorts of stuff. So go check them out. Yeah. Worst Games Ever Season 3, Peter. Yes, Worst Games Ever Season 3. It came out on Friday, I believe, um, yesterday, time of release of this podcast. So you can head over there. Aww. Oh, no, we're frozen. We'll make it. We're so close to the end now. Come We're on, so, camera. So close. so close. So you can go and look at... Um, oh, <laughs> six months worth of... Um, Worst games ever. No, games camera, ever. please. Oh, no. <laughs> so sad and upset. Worst games ever, season three. It's available. There's some really good episodes in there. Yeah, Peter. So go and have a look at those. I really enjoyed checking the video, checking the video through. <laughs> It is freezing. You're really just missing a treat. Incessantly. In audio form. Uh, yeah. Season Ooh. three. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, quickly. There's I just enough time for the sponsor yesterday. For the sponsor. Yeah, it's. Yeah, we've got just enough time to talk about today's sponsor again. That's PSVR2, the, uh, yes. <laughs> the collaboration between PlayStation and Star Wars. Star Wars. It's available now. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, everyone. Look Bye. after yourselves. Bye. Bye.